A lot of people in the watch world turn their noses up at quartz watches, and there's even some publications that just refuse to cover quartz watches. A lot of people, myself included, who talk about the introduction of quartz watches in the 70s, they call it the quartz crisis. But when we look at it as the evolution of a timekeeping device, it should really be called the quartz revolution. I do understand when people say that quartz watches lack emotion or that they're, they're not romantic or they're soulless, but you have to look at the right sort of thing. And it's really interesting because we're seeing this transition this impact of an industry happening today in the car industry. So you've got the combustion engine, the hybrid, and now we've got the takeover of the electric vehicle. People are making exactly the same comments around electric vehicles as they are around quartz watches, saying that electric vehicles lack soul, they're not as fun, they're not passionate. Now, of course, you could look at a bad electric vehicle and disclaim all electric vehicles are bad. But if you go to a purpose-made electric vehicle, they're just kick ass. And it's exactly the same thing with quartz watches. Yes, there are some cheap, terrible quartz movements, but there's also some amazing ones. And that's what I wanna to highlight today. I wanna to go through the history of quartz, kind of point out some major milestones, talk about how it came around, but then show you seven absolutely kick-ass quartz watches. So everything started back in 1927, when Bell Labs over in the US created the first quartz clock. Inside it had a block of quartz crystal stimulated by electricity and they managed to get this thing to be accurate to four seconds a year. The challenge was this thing was the size of a suitcase and it was a million miles away from being able to shrink that technology down to the size of a watch. It wasn't until 1957 when, again, in the US, Hamilton Watch Company created the Hamilton 500, which was the first electric powered watch but it still had a mechanical escapement. In 1960, the Swiss got involved. Beluva launched the Accutron, which was the first electric watch, but rather than having a mechanical escapement, it had a tuning fork escapement, still not quartz. However, at this point, quartz prototypes had been widely shared, and so it was quite obvious this was the direction that people were gonna go in. At this point, it was well established that Switzerland was the home and global center of watchmaking, and they had just gone into massive crisis mode because they'd seen how accurate these quartz watches were and how much cheaper they were to make. As a way of Switzerland trying to maintain their global dominance around watchmaking, 20 of the most prestigious and most recognized watch brands, watchmakers, came together to create a conglomerate, a collaboration called CEH. Some of these brands included Rolex, Patek, Omega, Longines, and IWC. The idea was surely all of these brains from these massive, powerful watchmakers could come up with something absolutely incredible. These guys were the first to launch a quartz watch in 1967, and it was powered by a Beta 1 movement. It was a battery-powered movement and had a quartz oscillator as a timekeeping element. However, that wasn't commercially available and they were actually beaten by Seiko in 1969 who launched the first commercially available quartz watch called the Seiko Astron. It was advertised as being a hundred times more accurate than a mechanical watch with an accuracy of five seconds a month. Absolutely wild compared to a mechanical watch. In 1970, CE8 hit back with the B to 21 movement and this is a very famous movement. This is a highly collectible movement but also a bit tricky because it's near impossible to find replacement batteries for this thing and that was one of the reasons this movement was a bit of a flop. It just ran out of battery power so quickly. And also there was a bit of, uh, the collaboration just fell apart because all of these little brands, they wanted their own in-house movements. I assume a lot of them didn't like the idea that we're all sharing the same technology. And for example, Rolex in the background were developing their own quartz movements with the help of René Lecou, the grandson of the co-founder of Jeje Lecou. They came out with the Rome movement in 1977, which went on to power the oyster quartz, kind of proving the, the rule around if your Rolex ticks, then it's fake. It's not quite true. A lot of these watches around this time used very similar technology, and they all pretty much had the same specification of being accurate to five seconds a month. Far superior to mechanical watches even, today. However, this is when Citizen came in with their hyper accurate watch in 1979, which was accurate to three seconds a year, but this was a limited edition. At this point, the quartz world was being dominated by Seiko and Citizen. Their technology was just far superior, far more advanced than anyone else in the world. And this was when ETA, the movement manufacturer, ETA had an idea. If Seiko and Citizen are dominating the mid tier and upper tier of quartz watchmaking, let's dominate the lower tier, the entry level 
of quartz watches. That's when they created Swatch. Swiss watch. Swatch, that's, that's where it comes from. In a way, Swatch kind of triggered the whole quartz crisis by creating a very cheap, very fashionable watch, meaning that a lot of other watch companies went out of business. So not only did they have the money, but then they had the opportunity to buy up all of these failing watch brands, which is quite a wild, very successful business idea. Swatch is now the biggest watch group in the world with very prestigious brands under the name. In 1988, Grand Seiko got involved and launched their first 9F quartz movement, accurate to 10 seconds a year, with limited editions being accurate to five seconds a year. 10 years later, in 1998, Grand Seiko launches the first spring drive movement. However, patents for the technology were actually filed in 1978. The spring drive movement is a really interesting one because up until now, a lot of people have been using batteries, electricity to power the watch, and that's gone through uh, battery powering a, a mechanical escapement, battery powering a tuning fork escapement, and then a battery powering a quartz oscillator. Grand Seiko did it a little bit differently. As the name suggests, spring drive, they use a spring to drive the movement. They use a spring that then, as it unwinds, creates electricity that then powers the quartz oscillator. So if we kind of look at cars, you've got mechanical movements being the combustion engine, you've got quartz movements being EVs, the spring drive really is the hybrid. You've got a benefit of the accuracy from the quartz oscillator, but then you've got the continuous power of an automatic mechanical movement. They aren't quite as accurate as full quartz movements, but for a mechanical watch, it's it's accurate to one second a day, which is, I kind of feel like it's best of both worlds. In a way, in a way it's best of both worlds. Just like in the mechanical watch world, there are loads of brands selling mechanical watches, but there are very few mechanical watch makers. That's exactly the same in the quartz world. You've got even more brands than the mechanical world uh, and, and even fewer manufacturers. The main people are ETA and then you've got Seiko and Citizen. There's, there's other people as well, but they're kind of the main thing in our watch world. You've got some killer watches from Tag Heuer, Breitling, and Zinn, I especially love the Tag Heuer Ac Racer and Titanium, and that's absolutely killer. And the Breitling Aerospace, always love that watch, especially the retro versions. But all of these watches are powered by either ETA or Citizen Movements. So I wanna focus on the guys who actually make their own watches. We're gonna start with the most affordable and then get to the, the crazy, expensive, and, and super rare. So I feel like this watch here should get an honorable mention. Not that it's got a high performing movement. It's, it's, it is just good look. This isn't part of the seven. By the way, this is just an excuse to, to plug the scraps that I sell over at barkandjack.com. This is a moon swatch, um, and it comes with this, um, listen to that. That's not sexy. No one wants a Velcro strap. Jump over to barkandjack.com and get a, a, a proper sexy strap for your moon swatch or any of your watches. We do 10% off now when you buy more than one strap. We know it's expensive to ship to various countries around the world, uh, and so we try and help out. And sometimes, actually, if you get one of our leather straps, it just makes shipping free, so. Jump over to BarkandJack.com. Improve your watch. Anyway, the first watch in this lineup has to be the Casio G-Shock. You can get these things in all shapes and sizes, and they start from 99 pounds. These things are absolutely bomb-proof and they're accurate to 15 seconds a month. Not wildly accurate, but pretty accurate. Next up, we've got Citizen and the Forza Super Titanium. I'm a massive fan of Citizen. That's where I started my watch journey. And this is an absolutely killer watch, especially in this dial color. This has a very famous eco drive movement inside. So it's a solar powered quartz movement, accurate to 15 seconds a month. It takes 30 hours of full sunlight to charge a battery, but it will then last for eight months. This sexy little thing costs 499 pounds. And I think it is absolutely awesome. Next up is a watch that I've actually got myself. This is the cheapest. There's quite a few versions of this, but this is the cheapest Grand Seiko 9F quartz watch. This costs 2,100 pounds and it's called a SBGX261. This watch is wildly accurate to 10 seconds a year and it does it by constantly monitoring the ambient temperature around the watch to then regulate, re-regulate the movement throughout the day. The battery life lasts for three years and I've actually done two videos on these. I've had two of these watches throughout my time. Um, I'll put a link in the description down below for them. Absolutely killer watches. And the movement inside is remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Next up, we've got another Citizen. This is called the Citizen. This is another titanium watch, and it seems like a lot of quartz watches are done in titanium, which I don't understand why a lot of brands do this. It's accurate to five seconds a year. And again, this has an eco drive movement, but this is one of their fancy eco drive movements. This costs £3,595, and it's got platinum flakes on the dial. Next up, we have Omega, and this is the first of two Swiss quartz watches. This is the Speedmaster X33 
Mercury Mars timer. And this is a really, I'd love to do a proper video on this because this is a really quite an interesting watch. Cost 6,600. Again, this is in titanium, but this was developed, tested, and is now certified by the European Space Agency and is accurate to two seconds a month. It has the ability to display time on Mars, which days are 2.7% longer than on Earth, which is pretty cool. Weird, but cool. Now, I wasn't sure whether to include this next one because it, it is the hybrid movement. It's not true quartz, it's, it's mechanical and quartz and a, a perfect combination of the two. But this is one of my favorite spring drive movements from Grand Seiko. This is called the White Bird SLGA009. Costs 8,500 pounds. There are cheaper versions of the spring drive movement, but this one I just particularly like. Again, because it's a hybrid movement, it's not as accurate as typical quartz watches. This is accurate to 10 seconds a month, but it has five days of power reserve, which I think is pretty cool for something that generates electricity. And it's also absolutely stunning. The next watch I think is the most interesting. This is the FP Jean Elegance. This is a remarkable watch. It looks weirdly futuristic, but also it's got that FB Jean very traditional styling, certainly with the typography, with the design of the numerals. But the movement side is insane, absolutely insane. It's not massively accurate, it's accurate to 15 seconds a month, which I kind of feel like it's 10,000 pounds. I kind of feel, and, and that's retail price, 10,000 pounds retail. On the gray market, you're looking around 40,000 pounds for one of these. They're really, really hard to get. But it's not the accuracy, which is a mind blowing part of it. It's the power reserve side of this thing. If you leave this watch for 35 minutes, it, it, it knows it's been left, it's just still. It goes into sleep mode where the hands stop moving, all the mechanics stop moving. Our microprocessor still records the time though. It can stay in this state for up to 18 years and it still knows the time. As soon as you pick up the watch, it knows you've moved the watch. It's got sensors inside, you can see the sensor on the front. It then springs into action. The hands move around to where they should be to display the time. And they don't just move in any direction. They take the shortest route. So they'll go either anti-clockwise or clockwise. Really quite clever. 18 years is remarkable, but even on normal use, if you're actually just wearing the watch every day, it will still last between eight to 10 years. So although it's not wildly accurate, the use of power is absolutely mind blowing. And this is a true in-house movement. FP Jean makes this movement. Quite amazing. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of quartz watches. If you've just completely shunned them and they, you just have no interest of them, or maybe you've come across quartz watches that changed your mind. I feel it's just a different mindset. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the Starless video, hit the subscribe button down there and that little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you want to check out watch straps and watch accessories, jump over to barkandjack.com. And don't forget, you get 10% off when you buy more than one strap and that can absolutely cover your shipping costs if not, just reduce it massively. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Bark and Jack. And if you're on TikTok, give me a follow there as well. That's it. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.